Okay, so here's my introduction. <clears throat> my name is Darren Schmidt, I'm a chiropractor, and this is my office. And I started in practice in 1997. I did one year of straight chiropractic, and I, I added nutrition in 98. And I've been practicing what I call hardcore holistic nutrition since then. And this is my fourth location I keep expanding. And we have uh, other practitioners here. And so my point is to figure out like how much good can we do with nutrition and herbs? And I keep learning more stuff. And um, the other point is to uh, try to get people as healthy as possible quickly and efficiently, effectively. And we have tools that are um, supplements that are that come from a long time ago, like 80, 90 years ago. And then of course we have diet. So we have modern supplements, we got herbs, and we got old supplements and herbs, and diet, and some homeopathic remedies. And that's kind of it. So our tools are very, we have a wide variety of tools, but they fit into two categories, supplements and diet. Um, so with, I, I guess I should give my background related to the subject. <clears throat> There's a room in this office that has a moldy uh, wall from a leaking window. Raise your hand if you've heard this story before. Okay. You haven't heard the story? I've heard part of it. I okay, mean, so my desk was next, next to that window for like maybe a year, year and a half. In October of 2015, I started having <clears throat> pain here. High, high, uh, high blood pressure, palpitations, pain down the arm, pain up the jaw, um, swollen feet. I was cold, I was hot, I was nauseous, I lacked appetite. And um, it took me a year to figure out that there was mold from the window that was leaking. But during that year, I learned a lot of stuff that nobody knows, that nobody knows to this day unless I taught them. And the main thing is that February 3rd, 2016 was the worst night of my life. My heart's pounding and my blood pressure is 155 over 95, I can't sleep. And <clears throat> so the next day I was going through my iPad and I stumbled upon some old notes that I got from a seminar related to heart and other subjects. So I went through the heart protocols from this doctor and I put together a protocol for myself. For myself. Now I knew that my heart is healthy, my arteries are healthy, we have a machine that measures it. And um, I had done an EKG, it was normal. And the bottom line is, I started these supplements, there were five of them. And uh, two days later, I felt better. And I knew I was on the right track. So that was February 4th, 5th, 6th. But I had to, then I figured out, I had to figure out why do these supplements work? So these supplements were created in 1934 by a guy named Dr. Royal Lee. And I'm thinking, okay, he knew something about my health. 80 years ago that I don't know. So I started, excuse the buzz. So I started um, reading more from the notes from the seminar that, that I had taken, it's been three years now. And for the month of March, I was studying Berry Berry, which is a vit vitamin B1 deficiency, also known as thiamine. And I even acquired a book from U of M Historical Library on the worldwide research on Berry Berry, because it's a horrible disease and it's because of stripping the nutrients out of rice and bread, stripping all the B vitamins out. And in 1932, I think it was, or it could have been 34, they put B1 back in the white rice and white bread, and it saved a lot of lives. And they thought they were done, but they missed B2 and B3 and B4 and B5 and B6, and all, there's 50 to 100 B vitamins. So through the month of March, I got that book, and I study, studied Berry Berry, and after a month of that, I was like, I'm sorry, through the, month of Feb through the month of February, I concluded that I did not have Berry Berry. That was not the problem. So then I thought, well, what was the problem? What is it? And I thought, well, the guy that created the supplements, Royal Lee, he would know, because he's the one that saved my life. So I have in my bookshelf books and articles from him. I started reading through these, and I came upon a concept of the mechanism of disease. 
uh, it's the most common mechanism of disease. There's other mechanisms. And it's called lactic acidosis. And there are other names for it. I, I found names like sugar acidosis, the sugar disease, you can call it toxicity, you can call it B vitamin deficiency. Um, there, you could come up with 12 or 15 different names for it. But in 1848, when they first found it in a cadaver, they called it lactic acidosis. Because there's this substance in the body that's vinegary and unpleasant like vinegar, and um, it looked like milk, like sour milk. So lactic from milk, acid, unpleasant, disagreeable, lactic acidosis. A few years after they found it in cadavers, then they found it in humans that were sick. Um, so I keep calling it lactic acidosis. Now, lactic acidosis is not a disease, although it is disease. Does that make sense? It is not a disease, but it is disease. You look it up in the International Classification of Diseases, ICD-10, it's not in there. Now, acidosis is, and there's other forms of acidosis, but not lactic acidosis. Okay, so one of my symptoms I had was anxiety, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So I, this is my PowerPoint. I only have a few slides. So anxiety causes and solutions. So I found this slide on uh, iStock photo on panic disorder and panic and anxiety are the same thing and lactic acidosis is the mechanism behind it. Now there's various uh, conditions here that they have in this slide. So for, I'm just going to start with angina pectoris. That's pain here at the, over the heart. So mostly guys have angina and they're given a drug, nitroglycerin or something else to get rid of the pain of the heart. And the heart is like tightening up and they go like this, that's angina. Okay, the, the mechanism of that is lactic acidosis. Here's a heart attack. So a heart attack is when a part of the heart dies and the, it's beating like this. And let's say this part right here dies and now the heart is beating like this. So the hemodynamics of the heart changed. It's beating funny now, it's beating differently. And um, <clears throat> then a clot, a plaque is thrown from the arteries around the heart. The person dies, they get an autopsy and the um, pathologist says, oh, they threw a clot. The problem is the plaque in the arteries. No, the problem is lactic acidosis and it made the heart beat differently, and then the plaque was thrown. So heart attack, panic disorder, lactic acidosis, it's all the same thing. Here's hot and cold. So there were days, there were two times when I measured my temperature, and I was two degrees too cold. So I'm usually 98.6, and I was 96 point something, 96.7, and I was freezing cold, and I'm usually very warm. So that was extremely odd to me, and I was freaking out over it because I knew something was wrong. Plus I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. Plus I had angina. Plus I had a fear of death. Okay, now we're talking emotional stuff. And you have these thoughts, did I make all the right decisions? Did I marry the right person? Did I pick the right career? These are the kind of thoughts that you get. My thoughts were, um, I hope it doesn't snow because I can't use my snowblower. My lawn is too big, who's gonna mow my lawn? I need to sell my house. I'll get a small condo. And I have like a 2,000 square foot house on two and a half acres with a barn. And, and that's, that's what fits me, like right now, like a bigger place like that. And I've only, I, at the time I had only been there three years. So now I'm thinking about so, selling it and getting a condo. I was like, wait a minute, these are not my thoughts. Where are these thoughts coming from? The thoughts are coming from the physiological disease mechanism that I was experiencing from the black mold in my heart, in my body, in my blood, in my muscles, okay? That's the cause. The black mold is a cause. Lactic acidosis is the mechanism. Then there's other causes we'll get to. Shallow breathing. And I had that. And I felt like I couldn't take a big <clears throat> breath in because my muscles were tight. My intercostal muscles, the muscles between the ribs, maybe my diaphragm, my neck muscles were tight, my heart was tight, my pecs, my shoulders, my 
So women get fibromyalgia, they get this tightness and pain over here. Men get it mostly in their heart. I, I, I was at the point where it was kind of everywhere and I had a deep ache in my calf muscles. Not a cramping, but a deep ache in my calf muscles. Shallow breathing. So there was a time, so my girlfriend lives in Chicago and she's leaving for the weekend. She's going back home and I'm standing like this and my feet are swollen and I'm cold and my heart is pounding and racing. My heart, my pulse was too high and I'm not doing anything but just standing there. Okay, hand, arm, leg vibration. So people talk about they fall asleep and there's, then they wake up and their um, like arms are numb. That's part of it too. Yeah, and coldness too. Leg circulation, hands and feet. Okay, but hand, arm, leg vibration, that's a nervous system thing or, and or it could be a muscular physiology problem. But it's lactic acidosis. That's not one, that's not one of the symptoms I experienced. Upset stomach and nausea. There was one day I woke up, I made a three egg omelet and I couldn't eat it. So I put it in a glass container with the ice pack and I brought it here and I had it for lunch. That is really odd for me to not eat breakfast. And then sweating, um, that has to do with hot and cold changes and dizziness. And you could be diagnosed with, oh, you're dizzy. You could be diagnosed with vertigo. You could be diagnosed that you need a neck adjustment. You could be diagnosed that you're, it's your vision. It's your, in, the inner ear balance mechanism. When the whole, the problem is from head to toe, it's every, it's lactic acidosis. And as I was experiencing my symptoms, I thought, well, I go to a cardiologist, which I did, and I got a diagnosis of esophageal spasm because it had tightness right here. And he prescribed um, a Prilosec for me, which I didn't take. And I'm thinking bigger picture, there's gotta be something bigger because I know it's not my stomach. I know it's not my gallbladder. Um, and if you go to a psychologist or psychiatrist, they're all over that fear of death. They'll give you the diagnosis of, it, of anxiety and they'll give you some drug, which won't work. And then they'll give you another one. Now you're on two. Then they'll raise the dose, right? And they're treating the symptoms of lactic acidosis, which is always the problem. It's treating the symptoms, always the problem. Shallow breathing. So like, just go to your specialist, your specialist in whatever um, compartment that they like to work on, gastroenterology, you name it, and they'll give you a diagnosis. But they're missing the whole big picture. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay, good. So rule number one, okay, we're talking about cause <clears throat> of anxiety. And you know, I gotta back up a little bit. The word anxiety means tightness, tightening, or narrowing. So I had this feeling here of, of my neck my esophagus being narrow and then my muscles were tight. So the word anxiety from ancient Greek means tightening or narrowing. When I learned that, when I looked that up in the dictionary, it changed my whole viewpoint on like a lot of things. So rule number one, that you have to know that there's something in your body. It's in your body. You got to get it out. So it could be mold, like what I experienced. And when I say mold, you can include fungus, yeast, or candida. Those organisms, regardless of what specifically it is, they all act and proliferate in the same way through the body. They'll send out a tentacle and then sprout from there. It's like the plants, you know, that will send out a shoot like in the, under the dirt, and then you get another plant that comes up. That's how they spread. And it could be toxins like metals or chemicals. So metals or chemicals, and they, and they, um, these causes will crowd out oxygen out of your blood and increase the amount of waste in your blood. That's the problem. You don't have enough oxygen in your blood and it's filled with garbage. So then the cells start to starve and they die. And when muscle cells die, they tighten up. That's called rigor mortis. And that's this feeling, the tight feeling whether it's the heart or the pecs or the shoulders, like, oh, I need another massage. I need to see my chiropractor. You might have the disease of, of you know, the mechanism of chronic disease going on. Now there could be other um, causes, but there's not that many. Um, 
of all the patients I've seen now in the last year and a half, it's mold or metals. Now another condition that causes lactic acidosis is uh, pharmaceutical medications. Basically they all cause death slowly through lactic acidosis by depleting B vitamins out of your body and the B, the B vitamins are needed by the liver to clean the garbage out of your blood. And then lastly, the, the last cause I'm going to talk about is sugar. And then the white bread, white pasta, white um, sugar, and white rice, thank you. Because all the B vitamins have been stripped from those grains. And they're supposed to be filled with B vitamins. I've been studying grains. I've, been, I've purchased five loaves of bread in the last um, 17 years. And um, so Dr. Royal Lee from Standard Process back in the 50s, he did a bunch of lectures. I have a collection of them. I've been listening to his lectures. And he says, if you have a choice between white bread and whole wheat bread, he said, you might want to pick the white bread because the whole wheat bread is going to be rancid. The white bread is not going to sustain your life. And over the course of many years, it'll cause a lot of harm. But really the truth is you don't want to pick either one. The only acceptable bread and this is known back in 1905 and 1915, is you have your own grain, you have your own mill in your garage or something, and you put the grain in there, you mill it, and you have seven days to eat that bread. Seven days is pushing it. You have really four days to eat that bread, okay? All right. And it's, the point is you got, you got the oils in like the wheat germ. Once that germ has been crushed, the oil has been exposed to oxygen, you got four days to put it in your mouth and consume it. So he said back, you know, back in the 50s and earlier, nobody would ever buy wheat, whole wheat bread because by the time they open it up, you just smell it, it's rancid, they threw it away. So they add a bunch of chemicals to it now so it doesn't smell so bad, okay? All right, so so you got to treat the cause, and then here's the mechanism that's a lactic acidosis, known through the last 160 years as different names. It's not a disease, although it is disease. So I've talked about that. Now I have a few supplements that, um, that I was on from 1934, Cataplex B and Cataplex G. And those were designed by Royally beginning nine years earlier. He did his own feeding studies to um, figure out how to fix lactic acidosis. I gotta wake you up. You can sleep, but no snoring allowed. Okay, rule number three, treat the clinical symptom picture. So when you come in as a patient, any doctor that you see, what are you complaining about? You're complaining about skin, pain, how you feel, sick, stomach function, I feel depressed, I can't sleep. Those are all the symptoms. Okay, so and then those need to be addressed. Okay, so going this, let's just go back to where I was. I had the lactic acidosis. So I, I treated that in March, February, March of last year. And it kept me going through the summer. And then October of 2016, I found the mold. That's the cause. So treat lactic acidosis and treat the cause and treat the clinical symptom picture. So I put myself on a bunch of muscle and artery support and I did a little bit of digestive support but I didn't really need it but other people need the digestive support other people need the thyroid support or the brain support depending on like what's your worst symptom got that okay so so commonly anxiety is located in one or more of three areas and the most common one is <clears throat> like muscle so for guys chest and for women more up here so that's the first most common place. And then the second place would be brain. And the third place is digestive. So I'll ask this question, where do you feel the anxiety? And people go like this, it's in my stomach. Or they'll say, it's all over, that's here. Or, you know, and then I'll ask like, well, do you get this chest tightening? And it's like, no, do you get, and it turns out to be in their brain. So, um, so basically, Chest and muscles, if you have muscle spasms, feed the muscles. If you have intestinal symptoms, fix the digestive system to support it. It's nutritional support. And it really comes down to legal, um, legal terms too, because we can only support and feed the body. 
we can't treat a disease. So really we're fixing the cause, the mechanism, and then supporting the organs, and we're not treating any disease. If you have a brain anxiety, feed the brain. So when it's bad enough, it's called cachexia. It's called the cachexia cycle. So what I had um, on my, um, I'll get into that later, but cachexia means bad habits. And that's how people die from their bad habits. From We're talking ancient Greek, the people who were dying from chronic illness had a bad habit. So the Greeks said, oh, cachexia. And what's the bad habit? It's sugar. And then the foods that turn into sugar very easily, white bread and stuff like that. So the cachexia cycle is the same thing as the lactic acid cycle, is the same thing as sugar disease, is the same thing as lactic acidosis. Okay, um, now when let's talk about feeding the brain regarding anxiety. We have a few supplements that work really well for slowing down racing thoughts. One's called Minchax, the other one's called Mintran. So people are laying in bed and their brain is racing and they can't fall asleep that, that easily. Huh? Yes. Yeah. It will never stop. <laughs> so Minchax, created by Royal Lee, to feed minerals into the brain. How do you spell it? And that'll come. M-I-N dash C-H-E-X. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then min tran, so min means mineral, tran means tranquil. Min tran is more minerals, min checks is some minerals but other nutritional factors that are very common. Um, and then the other thing about anxiety too is there, there can be some uh, crossover with brain fatigue so we have a supplement called RNA, ribonucleic acid. It feeds the brain and gives the brain energy. Okay. Um, now, regarding heart and uh, chest muscles and fibr fibromyalgia type pain, um, really you gotta fix the lactic acidosis. And then the supplements that help with that the most would be like Cardio Plus, which we sell, and these are all from Standard Process. And Cardio Plus is calming. Cataplex G is calming. If your if your blood pressure is too high, huh? What's in it? Mostly liver, but there's a, there's probably twelve different things that are in it. And then if you're tired during the day, you need some uplifting, or if your brain is tired, you need Cataplex B or um, Vasculin. So we got Cataplex B and Vasculin to lift up and to give energy, and we got Cataplex G and Cardio Plus to calm that calm. So with the anxiety, you wanna calm. You can take both at the same time. You can take the B for the daytime, take the G at nighttime, okay? Um, now, with we have a lot of products over there, and most of those products, 90% of those products, are to treat the clinical symptom picture, all the different organs. And there's a few supplements that get rid of the mold. There's a few supplements that get rid of the heavy metals and the other toxins. And there's a few supplements that take care of the lactic acidosis. So when you look at all that, we're probably talking 95% of them are for treating the eyes or treating um, the lungs, you know, treating the individual organs. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's 7.30. All right, any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Do um, parasites or bacteria anything ever cause um, the symptoms of, of the uh, lactic acid? Oh yeah, for sure. So good question. So parasites and mold, fungus, and bacteria, and virus, they all cause lactic acidosis. Because, yeah, and they're creating waste. So it took me a while to find a reference about mold causing lactic acidosis. I found the reference about six months ago. But there's a woman named Jane Lim. And she talks about, the, <coughs> the name of the book is called The Most Common, The Most Deadly. And she's talking about mold. How it's so common, and it's so deadly, and yet it's completely ignored by conventional medicine. And in her book, she talks about how it causes the excess production of lactic acid, and methane, and carbon dioxide, and these are all waste products in the blood that crowd out the oxygen. So, um, I had a patient move from Pittsburgh to Charlotte, North Carolina, and her apartment is moldy. She, within that day that she moved in, she can't breathe, her sinuses are clogged up. So two weeks later, she's out, she's living in a hotel, 
I talked to her on the phone earlier this week, and she looked up on online. She said that one out of four apartment dwellers complain of mold in their apartment in uh, in that town in North Carolina. Yeah. I think I have mold in my house too. Where yeah. I'm at now and I can't find it. Yeah. So what is there to take then for the mold that you're? Well, you guys, you still got to find it. Right. Right. But I mean, until I can, you know. Yeah, we have mold killers, and then you got to do some do some cleaning. So if your mold is in the sinuses, we got sinus cleaning. Who's your? You guys just see your practitioner and yeah, and figure that out. Okay. Okay. Um, but it could be in the attic. Like you can't see it unless you go up in the attic with a flashlight and look in the the corners and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've had so many people on my YouTube channel and you know, who I talk on the phone, they're like, oh, okay, you saved my life because I found mold in my kitchen and in my attic and I would have never even looked for it had you not said it. Now is mold only black mold? No, bl mold could be green or brown or white, it doesn't matter. Okay. The black mold is known to be very, very deadly. Okay. Invasive um, aspergillosis has a 50% survival rate. Half the people with that die. And I had it. I know, like, the the woman that tested that that room, she's tested moldy buildings for thirty years, and she is just dumbfounded that I'm still alive and doing the things that I'm doing because of all the supplements I've been taking and all the things I all the steps I've taken. She goes, people don't survive this stuff. They're on disability, and they have heart problems, and they don't make it. So invasive aspergillosis is black mold and it's widely known because it's so deadly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question? Thank you. Yeah. I just wondered um, in combination with the diet and people doing testing and things like that, does ultraviolet light ever make a difference? Like, because yeah. I know that disease they had in Africa that was really bad, it came here, I can't remember what Ebola. it was. Yeah, Ebola. They said that just uh, ultraviolet light, like in 30 seconds or so, it'll die. And I'm wondering why we, you know, if we should be doing things like that in our house, not pre home. Yeah. But does that. There's different have frequencies. You ever worked with it or lasers or seen anything happen? With yeah, that? there's different frequencies oh. for different organisms. So Dr. Uh, Royal Rife, he figured that out. And um, so, you know, when you get your hair cut and they put the comb underneath that ultraviolet light. That's by law, they have to do that because it kills the bacteria on the comb. Um, so yeah. yeah, so being on the sun is really good, good if you got, yeah, for sure. And it, it'll kill mold. And the reason why my symptoms were so bad at night is because it's dark in my bedroom and it's warm under the covers, as opposed to being a little bit cold, it was February, so as, as opposed to being cold outside with the sun. So when people have worse symptoms at night, it's because they got mold in their body. And you've heard of, there's people that have knee pain a day before it rains. They can yeah. feel that cold front coming in. Mm -hmm. That's mold in their knee. Mm -hmm. It's mold in their body. And it could be from their knee to their head, you know, and they get a lo little more congestion in their lungs or something, but it's, it's an organism in their body that's reacting to the change in the environment of the, like the, the water in the air and stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. Got another question? <clears throat> yeah. Well, this is probably not the subject you were going to talk about, but um, my my grandson has, you know, he's, he's um, gluten intolerant and yeah. his, um, well, so am I, but um, his um, genetic test showed that he had the type of gene that um, if he eats gluten, it causes more um, nervous system problems. Yeah. And um, I, I had like free floating anxiety for years and years and I didn't know I was gluten intolerant. So I have a feeling that, that those two things are related. Yeah, gluten causes <clears throat> problems and um they're gonna raise your hand. Um so it's like this, you have the the use of uh glyphosate, which is Roundup, over the years, beginning in what, nineteen ninety three, has increased like this. And then um, gluten intolerance and diseases have gone up like this. And there's one year or two years where it actually went down a little bit, the use went down a little bit, and then the disease went down a little bit too. 
So that doesn't mean that there's like a direct cause and effect um, link, but there's a definitely a correlation. So it's not gluten, it's the poisons that they spray in agriculture. And that's this country. And there's other countries that don't have gluten problems. And we didn't have it in the 1950s or 60s or 70s or 80s. <laughs> it's a modern problem because of agricultural chemicals. So yeah, I just, I just, like I said, I purchased five loaves of bread in 17 years. And the reason why I did that was just as an experiment because of what other, you know, because I had a problem at the time. And I thought, well, what would bread do for me? And it didn't do anything good, so I didn't buy any more. Okay. Questions? All right, I'm gonna demonstrate the muscle testing that we do. Can you turn the, I'm gonna be right here. Turn this. <clears throat> So this is a test kit that I made for the muscle testing procedure. Raise your hand if you don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to muscle testing, where you hold your arm up. You guys all know. Okay, <clears throat> so it was in the 1930s when two of the founders of medicine talked about treating the cause and the mechanism and the clinical picture. Dr. Henry Harrower, the fa father of endocrinology, and Dr. Otto Warburg, the father of um, physiology. War Warburg was, like, he's the man. He's amazing. So I made this test kit. Here's the, this test kit is for the clinical symptom picture. These are all the organs. And represented in um, energetic frequencies contained in those vials. And then here we have the causes, which are organisms like bacteria, fungus, virus, and, and other things, and then metals and chemicals, and other things. And here we have the mechanism. This is lactic acidosis. So what I'm doing is what the fathers of, of uh, medicine said to do back in the 30s. I'm doing it now with these test kits. And if you don't, if there's a practitioner or doctor that doesn't do muscle testing and they do lab work, they still have to follow the physiology. They still have to fix the mechanism, cause, and clinical picture. Okay. So um, I need somebody to demonstrate on. Okay. So what am I going to find with you? I don't know. Then I, I just tested you no. a few. I need somebody new. Who's I'm new? That's never. You're new. You got that new look on your face. You can stand right here. <laughs> Who dragged you here? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so some of this testing will be real and some will be fake. And I'll just, I'll let you know. Okay, so. Step back a little. Good, that's good. Hold your left arm out, down some. Okay, I'm gonna push down, match me. That's good, now take your right hand and go like this, behind your glasses. That's good, match me. Ready? Okay, now flip your finger around this way and match me. So that's weak, do you see the difference there? Now that was practice. And one side was weak, one side was strong, that's, that was practice. Now, um, I don't know like what your symptoms are, but I'm just gonna, these are the fungus vials from my test kit. Hold your arm up. Turn your wrist a little bit. Good, so I'm gonna take your phone out. Whoops, sorry. Here. Hold your left arm up. So here's fungus, I'm gonna put it right over your heart. That's good. And like lymphatic system, and stomach, and liver, liver, so you got a little fungus going on in your liver. Here's adrenals, and kidney, and bladder, and sometimes it'll be in the brain. Give me strength, give me strength. Give me strength? Yeah, that, that, that's fine. And then intestines, like that. So I found a little something uh, going on in your liver. Um, so that's a cause of disease. So here's four vials related to um, lactic acidosis. Okay, hold your arm up. So I'm gonna put this up against your heart, ready? So there's that. Can I have B and G? Thanks. So of these four vials, I'm gonna find out if there's one that's important. Maybe all four, nope, not this one. Here's this one. So that's a problem. So that's acid aldehyde, and that comes from 
um, fungus or from excessive consumption and utilization of carbohydrates for fuel. This is acetate, same thing as acetaldehyde. It'll come from, I need that over here. Can you bring it over here? Okay, hold your arm up. This is, and then this one. Yeah, so you got, this is lactic acid, thank you. So, yeah. He makes a good guinea pig. Yeah, yeah you're good. Thank you, I appreciate this. So now I'm gonna move from your heart over to under the, you know, behind the sternum, or in front of the sternum, lungs. And there's the liver and gallbladder. And now, now in the intestines, we're getting a little bit of this, these waste products. And adrenals and kidneys. So you got more lactic acidosis than you do fungus. So here's cataplex B, which, which fixes lactic acidosis and gives you energy. Um, so let's just see what happens. And that's a no. And then here's the brother of B. This is cataplex G which is calming, ready? And that's strong. So that'll be the solution for you related to lactic acidosis. And then, um, I'm actually gonna stop right there. Because this diagnosis is free. <laughs> yeah, this is free. All right, thanks, you can have a seat. Thank you. Okay, and then, um, re related to organs, here, let me use you. Oh. I'm gonna have you stand here. <clears throat> Face this way. Oh, this way. That'll work. So now these vials, like I said, they're they have or they they have the energetic signature of organs. We'll jam up. This is adrenal. So I'm gonna hold it against the adrenals. Turn around. Which way? That way. This way. This way? Okay. Yeah. So I just hold it against the adrenals and I test it that way. And that's okay, turn back around. So I can do this with any organ. So here's stomach, step back a little, that'll work. Okay. So I hold it right up against the stomach and then I can pull away. There is a field that comes off the body and I study a lot of quantum physics and the whole fractographic universe theory in physics. And so I'm taking the field of the stomach here and adding it to the field of the stomach here and I pull away and it's strong. Her arm is strong the whole time. Um, I, here's the thyroid like this. And of course I'm looking at lab tests and I'm listening to the symptoms. I'm taking a full history. Drop your arm for a second. You do genetic testing too? Yeah, we've done genetic testing. So this is, the, the muscle testing gives us a real time um, energetic um, answer. And um, the lab tests, oftentimes, we use to monitor progress. So we're looking at how was it six months ago and how is it now. But really, when you're, you know, when, you, uh, when you're addressing health like the way we do, a lot of things get better. Many, many things get better. Hold your arm up. So this is uh, nerves, this vial. So what organ is your weakest organ? Okay. So I'm going to pull up the gallbladder vial. I'm gonna hold it right, right here. Ready? Hold tight. Mm -hmm. It's strong. Oh, it's strong. Yeah, good. Mm. That's awesome. Oh, with, with me, muscle testing caught, caught my, um, some of my condition before the lab test did, or the lab test didn't show it. Right, the lab test may not show it. So I'm saying, you're saying that I caught you your condition? Caught it before they even saw it, or the one they did, they didn't do the test to find it. So you yeah. the one that did that. Yeah. So we'll pick up on problems that they don't find. And of course, lab tests are good and we still use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. So what is it showing? Like if you hold the stomach vial up to her stomach, what exactly is that showing yeah. us? Yeah, let's pretend here. Let's do thyroid, hold your arm up. So let's pretend we go like this mm -hmm. and her arm goes weak. I just, that just means that something's wrong with the thyroid. Okay. So it's not robust and strong physically or energetically. Whereas if it were, we could hold this up here, we could poke at it, we could do all kinds of things with the thyroid and it stays strong. So let's say it goes weak, and then hold this up against your thyroid, right? And then I would take the other kit with the cause and the mechanism and the other vials and start finding out what's going on with the thyroid and trying to solve the puzzle. Okay. 
Thank you. And have a seat. So really, when you look at this, you're, you're walking in with a puzzle. And it's your body. you got some symptoms. And it's our job to first find the pieces of the puzzle, and then find out what order, and then put it back together again. If I understood your answer to her, you're using that kit with the organs to identify which organ has a problem. Once you do that, you then go to the other kit to start figuring out what that organ needs or what's bothering it. It could be that way. That's yes to the answer, and it could be, first I find the mechanism, or maybe first I find the cause. I, I haven't, I don't have a good, it doesn't always work out like one, two, three. <clears throat> It could be three, one, two, it could be. And since you saw the Rubik's Cube in two minutes, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had a new patient uh, last, was it month, Tuesday? He solves it in 16 seconds. No way. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's I'm not going to try to do that. Okay, any other questions? Any questions on lactic acidosis? Sure. Yeah. You went through a bunch of the supplement that you have to help things. What are the top five or ten worst things you can eat? What's the worst thing you can put in your system? The worst foods you can eat would be the fake oils. So that includes margarine, hydrogenated fats, canola. mozzola, canola, yeah. corn oil. So fake oils. And then white sugar. I'm going to say white carbohydrates. White bread, white sugar, white rice, white flour products. I mean, that encompasses a lot of the American diet. Um, and then um, <clears throat> my next thing that comes to mind would be, uh, this might be number five, but let's just call it number three. Farm-raised fish. It's really bad. Um, those are big categories. Help me out here. I got two more. Huh? Let me Red meat? You mean what organic. kind of red meat? Non-organic red meat? Yeah. Slow to digest. Yeah, yeah, with the, acidosis. Yeah, in the yeah, in the presence of an ill body, there are foods that are difficult to digest. So that one really bad night, February third, twenty sixteen, for dinner I had four burger patties. About a week later, or ten days later, I had beef stew. And that was another bad night. So it's just difficult when your kidneys and your liver aren't doing well to stay away from foods that are more difficult to digest. Now I'm a huge fan of red meat. And I, just, I still eat it almost every day and I feel so good on it. And people just have, people have meat bodies, other people have lettuce bodies. I don't understand. That's just the way it is. But, um, pop, yeah, pop goes in the category of white sugar, candy cakes, cookies um, those are, that's that's kind of it it's the white bread white food junk food Processed and then it's the food. fake oils yeah so dr. Royal Lee calls it foodless foods those are the problems so when you have um, you can have pr the, the number of Americans that die from agriculturally sprayed produce per year is 10 and that's in this research statistically 10 people in this country die because they're eating too much um, pesticides and other agricultural chemicals so you know had your bets on that the GMO foods aren't good either. yeah so so I would I, I would say that GMO foods are not good philosophically I can't get my mind around the amount of manipulation that they do with DNA but I think there's a lot of fake research by Monsanto and people say GMO is fine. But let's say it is fine. Let's say they win the argument. GMO crops lead to more Roundup. So my dad has a commercial farm and he told me they started growing BT corn, biotech corn. And normally they spray 11 times a summer. Well, that summer they had to spray it 13 times. And they were told by the salesman, you, you, have to, you end up spraying it less. Well, they were totally lied to. And that's the equivalent of conventional medicine. One time I had a cat that was sick. And the veterinarian told me, give your cat this pill. And I said, well, what does the pill do? And she said, it rearranges 
um, the, the organisms in the gut. I was like, okay, well, what kind of pill is it? And she said, well, it helps the good bugs and it kills the bad bugs. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm starting to, this is like two years ago, or two years ago. Like, I know what's going on. So I said to her, okay, so what kind of pill is it? This is the third time in the same conversation. And she goes, it's an antibiotic. <laughs> so she's lying to me. She's kind of lying to me. And then she didn't want to tell me and she told me, but okay. So there's that. So you know how to fix anxiety now? Come get tested. <laughs> yeah. So with, with lactic acidosis, it's important that um, you get into ketosis unless you have a mold problem for anxiety, to get rid of the anxiety. So there's a lot of dietary work. So here, let me just describe this. Here's the cells and they're burning sugar. Here's the problem. And you get these four waste products. I'll put four WP for waste products. You also get the acid coming off here. That's the acid part of acidosis. One of these waste products is lactate, that's why it's lactic acidosis, and that has to be cleaned up by the liver. So vegetables clean this up, vegetables can help the liver, and we have supplements that clean this up and supplements that help the liver, and you gotta detox too for the liver sometimes, or a lot of times. And then you gotta get rid of the sugar out of your blood. You gotta clean your blood of sugar. So that means you have to clean your diet of sugar. And that includes foods that turn into sugar very quickly, all the grains. So when you're not burning sugar, what are you burning? Fat or ketones. You can burn fat and lose weight, but not get into ketosis. Okay, it's important that you get into ketosis for that extra boost, the superpower you get from ketosis. So, so you have to address this part. One, two, three, and, so, and this will go away on its own. But the way you get rid of the, ox the hydrogen is by adding oxygen. So some people swear by exercise or, or deep breathing meditation or hyperbaric oxygen therapy. People consume hydrogen peroxide or ozone. These are all increasing oxygen to get rid of the waste, the acid. Okay, but now this is not the thing, right? This is not the cure for everything, although there are books that claim it is. And then um, eating lettuce is not the thing. It's part of it. Ketosis is a huge part of it, yeah. I had a couple of questions. As far as exercise, Kristen and I have talked about this a lot too, but I've been noticing that when I do exercise that I'm getting really faint and I'm um, dizzy and all that kind of stuff. So what is going on exactly in my body that's causing that right now? Um, well, that could be like a need for Cataplex B to okay. address the lactic acidosis part. Or it could be the need for adrenal support to address the clinical symptom picture. Which is all stuff actually that, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. So ketosis then, if anybody didn't know, that's when we burn the fat, like coconut oil and things like that. Right. And when we have fat, it'll burn for energy. Yeah. And then we'll get rid of the acid in the system from the sugar. When we, when we are burning the fat, mm -hmm. we're not making acid anymore from burning sugar. Right. So this goes away because of non-production, non and this goes away because of non-production too. Okay. And then you eat, you know, plants clean. Plants clean the body. So the plants can clean this up. The plants can help the liver. But plants, you, you gotta get a lot of B vitamins, and the best source is liver. Eating liver to save your liver. Um, so B vitamins here, and then detoxification. And we have a great detox program that like fixes everything. So the, um, when I started this detox program four months ago, my pain from the mold was right here. And then it went from here to here to here to here. And it's dissipating. The, the level of severity of pain is dramatically lower. I'm super happy about it. But the point is the mold was leaving my heart and going into my lymphatic system. Love it. And that's been for the last four months. Now I've had this symptom for a year and a half. And I've been doing a bunch of things and the Cataplex B and G were helping me. But really, you gotta clean that stuff out. Now the thing about mold, it, it's, uh, 
it's a toxin by itself. It produces toxins. You can kill the mold. You got to drain out dead mold. And then you also have to get rid of the mycotoxins. It's not just kill it and clean it. It's also kill it, clean it, and then you got to get rid of the toxins it produces that you're, you've been breathing in. Okay? One yeah. Question. So taking, um, if we don't like liver, you have the pills that have the liver, right? So that we don't have to eat yeah. liver every day and take in the extra calories and all that, right? Right. Oh, great. Yeah, we have a lot of different liver supplements. Yeah. And we have supplements that address, that basically contain the DNA of every organ in your body. So I've been studying this too, like imagine our ancestors and their tribes would hunt down a deer or whatever. They ate these, they ate this stuff first from here to here, not the muscle meat. That was later. That was for the winter time or that was for the dogs. So they ate the sweet bread, which is pancreas and thymus. They ate the brain. They ate the stomach, they ate the intestines, they ate the heart and the lungs. And what's the value in that? You're eating the DNA. Your body takes that DNA from those different organs and fixes your organs with that. So if they ate like if they ate this way once a month or maybe four times a year, I think that we should be doing the same thing. So we have all these glandulars like that. Make sense? Is that too gross? No, thank you. No, it's fine. It's really good. It's the way nature is. Okay. And when you consume the DNA of these organs, it controls the growth of your cells. It'll speed up the production of more cells or it'll slow it down. So it does have an effect on cancer. It does have an effect on growth and repair. Okay.